hello. You've caught me making an urgent appeal to developers on behalf of gamers everywhere. Please, please, could you stop making massive, amazing, beautiful video games for just five minutes? Each month, gamers around the world are having just the best time. I've seen it happen. Tens upon hundreds of hours spent exploring the richest, most immersive virtual worlds ever built. And before players are even finished, the next game arrives bigger, better, newer. There simply aren't enough not very good games anymore. The current landscape is a vicious cycle of endless enjoyment. And if something isn't done soon, we could very well be enjoying ourselves forever. Dave here doesn't even know what his game of the year is. I've got like eight of them. They're all just so good. This has to stop. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey, God of War. He's enjoying himself too much. Spider-Man, Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> and Fallout 76 is out <laughs> next week. It's too much, we can't keep up, and as well as being inconsiderately amazing, these games are often full of detail and distractions that mean we'll simply never finish them, ever. Here are seven games too big and beautiful for their own good. We'll start with No Man's Sky, a game I'm convinced is an elaborate meta-commentary on the nature of modern gaming habits in disguise as an infinitely explorable galaxy-sized survival RPG. There are 18 quintillion planets in No Man's Sky, and, in my theory, each of these planets represents a brilliant game. You land on a planet, you go, oh, what an amazing planet, I'm going to fully explore this, I'm going to document all the life forms, mine all the minerals, make an amazing base, explore all the ocean, oh, another planet! And off you fly, seduced by the untouched newness of the next planet, flashing its lens flare friendly ice rings across the horizon. And so you continue, gasping at the majesty of each planet even as you use them as celestial trampolines to bounce yourself to the next. Every so often you'll fall deeply in love with a single planet, maybe you'll build a base there and scan everything there is to scan. But as you reach the centre of the galaxy and cast a glance back at the path behind you, it will undoubtedly be strewn with worlds unexplored, untouched, their secrets forever undiscovered. There's always something else, something new, the irresistible lure of exploring over there, ironically curtailing your exploration of what's right in front of you. That and photo mode. You can't give me photo mode, game with near infinite variety of flora, fauna and cosmic vista, and also expect me to make any sort of narrative headway, because I'll just be doing this the entire time. You're too big, No Man's Sky, and too beautiful. Damn, your endless wonder. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is next, and just come on. Look at the size of that map. It's actually ridiculous. One thing that always strikes me about Odyssey's gorgeous, fantastical recreation of ancient Greece is how, in most open world games, you'll get amazing vistas and landscapes that stretch for miles, but they're often bordered by towering, impassable mountain ranges that serve a number of practical uses. They provide a barrier while creating the illusion of size. They hint at the world beyond, imbuing whatever sandbox out of which they thrust with a sense of mystery and magic. But obviously you can't actually climb over them because, you know, that would be silly and break the illusion. You know, these worlds have to end somewhere. Yeah, in Odyssey, you can just clamber over them plunging into the next gorgeous bit of open world. Same thing with the oceans, just hop in your boat and plough through. Bits of world that traditionally are built into games of this nature to create the illusion of size and depth are literally traversable in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and that, as far as I'm concerned, 
is an amazing nonsense. And there's photo mode here as well. Take a look at some of the snaps I've taken. What you're seeing now is the result of an entire evening's play. I didn't do any missions, I didn't kill anyone, I spent actual hours of my life climbing in and out of my boat just so I could get a freeze frame of the water rippling as Cassandra got out. Also, you can be a wildlife photographer too if you like, all of which must be infuriating for those NPCs who just want you to, you know, go and murder a bunch of bandits. The Witcher 3 is next up, a game I've talked about at length over the years, but then I can't make a video about open worlds that are too big and beautiful for their own good and then not include this. The amount of time I've wasted, wasted, just trotting about the bleak war ravaged plains of Velen, or the crisp startling mountain valleys around Kaer Morhen, or the golden majesty of the fields and lakes of Toussaint, or sailing through the wild blustery crags of the Skellig Isles just for the sake of it. You know, not doing anything in particular, not hunting a witcher contract, not fighting drowners, or even sharing screenshots but simply just taking it in, gulping lungfuls of fresh forest air, allowing yourself to be absorbed by the world to the point where you can almost smell the pine resin. I've spent a nonsense amount of time in The Witcher 3 since it released in 2015, like 400 hours easily. And I reckon a good 100 of those hours has been spent simply existing. I still play the game now when I fancy chilling out, you know, those quiet evenings where you have a hot bath, read a good book, a mental cleanse, and finish it off with a stroll through the valleys of Kaer Morhen. <sighs> Still haven't finished the Blood and Wine DLC, and I probably never will. Horizon Zero Dawn is our fourth entry, a game that relentlessly amazes with its breathtaking variety of landscape, from lush tropical forest to parched desert to remote snowy mountain ranges. I sometimes feel as though I have two modes when I play this game. Ah! Mode and Ooh, mode. There's the slide about on your knees desperately avoiding sawtooth and thunderjaw fire while lasering them to death with their own guns mode. That's ah mode. And then there's ooh mode, which goes like this. Ooh, look at how each individual blade of grass moves as I walk very slowly through it. Ooh, look how the light adds depth and mystery to this old ruined landscape. Ooh, look how the snow clumps and hangs on these trees and how it reacts to me walking through it. Ooh. This mode adds literal tens of hours to every Horizon Zero Dawn playthrough. When there are as many amazing games as there are now, I don't have time to be looking at beautiful incredible scenery. There aren't enough hours in the day for me to ogle every blade of grass and every branch of every tree and every ray of sun or flash of aurora. Stop being so selfishly beautiful, Horizon Zero Dawn. Now our fifth entry is a game whose beauty I have actually conquered to the point where I've earned the Platinum Trophy. That's right, me, the serial unfinisher. You might be massive and gorgeous Final Fantasy XV, but I have conquered you. I've beaten your big mountain tortoise and the proper way too, hitting it repeatedly in the eye for 90 minutes. None of this magic ring instant kill noob nonsense. I've walked around repeatedly for hours and hours to get Gladio up to level 10. I've fished the biggest fish. I've flown the regalia. There is nothing else with which you can distract me. Wait. So your chocobo can now walk over those massive arches of rock. You captured that episode prompto DLC, yeah? For the video we desperately need to make. Ah, God of War. I know God of War, I thought, before being completely surprised by God of War when it came out earlier this year. I finished all the other games. You basically just run forward through pretty environments, brutally killing ancient myths and legends for 10 hours. I'll have this polished off in no time. And even if it takes me a while, I'll definitely be done before Spider-Man, Dragon Quest XI and Shadow of the Tomb Raider come out later in the year.
what is this? That's the Lake of Nine, a massive, beautiful, open, worldish area filled with hidden secrets and optional extras and fatally, if you're me, water. Lovely, vast, open stretches of pretty, rolly, wet water at which you can stare endlessly and and like many of the games on this list there's also a photo mode in god of war with selfies you can make kratos grin which feels wrong on a sort of natural elemental level like you've carved a smiley face on a tree i mean you know when developers get asked how long a game is and they'll say something like well, if you do just the story, that's 20 hours, but if you explore all the secrets, it could be 40. I feel like they should add a new layer to that for all the games in this list. So, how long do you think it would take to complete Punch the Bad Man 9? Uh, well, it's, it's uh, one of those tricky questions, and um, there are things we're, we're not ready to talk about yet, but... Um, I feel comfortable saying if you power through the story, you'll be done in about 15 hours. Uh, if you're one of those people who's going to complete every side quest, collect every collectible, I reckon you'd be looking at 25 to 30 hours. Uh, having said that, if you uh, take a selfie with every bad man that you can punch or take the time to inspect the finer details of our uh, knuckle engine, uh, best in class by the way, uh, seriously the hair follicles on every knuckle and the subdermal textures are just, uh, then uh, you could easily be playing for 200 hours. Final entry, the game that inspired this video, Red Dead Redemption 2. Just stop, Red Dead Redemption 2, okay? I'm trying to play you. I really am trying to play you. I'd love to actually finish a game this year, and you've come along and ruined my dolphin photo time in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so it needs to be you I finish, but at every turn, there's something to ooh at, isn't there? First off, the weather. It dynamically changes the environment. You know, when it rains, puddles will form and then they'll drain away afterwards. Look at the mud. Look at the footprints in the mud. I mean, for crying out loud, I've got bounties to track and missions to complete Red Dead. And your irritatingly breathtaking cinematic camera is not helping either. And even if you manage to get past the incredible elemental effects, there's other stuff they've put in there to distract you as well. Like how when you skin animals, you actually skin animals. Like you see the skin come off and then get to put it on the back of your horse. And the way storms roll in. And the way when you make camp, you can just sit in your tent and stare at your fire for however long you want. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game that wants you to take your time with it. It's a luxury cruise liner of a game. Enormous, intricate, magnificent and filled with pleasures you wouldn't expect and some you may never find. But that also means it doesn't corner quickly. It's not dip in and outable or sporty. You are supposed to take your time. It's just that with all the lovely details Rockstar has painted in, I will probably take all the time. That is, from now until the heat death of the universe to actually finish Red Dead Redemption 2. Or until the next massive, amazing, brilliant game comes out, probably next week. So yes, yeah, stop games, slow down. Be bad for a bit if you like, I won't even mind that much. Give us a like if you enjoyed the video, hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our videos, and join us again next week for another Friday feature. Thanks for watching. For the players.